okay, so we're getting Jake Run and Blazing Boy, but instead playing Planet. Uh, now, I definitely remember seeing that they are definitely a plan player, but probably since it might be this their main, um, definitely coming out right now against um, Jay Grunt. And I definitely love Jay Grunt's tag being um, Toxic Croak. <laughs> yeah, definitely funny tag. Yeah, Toxic Croak's OD Pokemon. Um, this is a Toxic Croak skin, um, right? Uh, I think Toxic Croak is blue. This one's like a little bit purple. I'm not sure. Do yeah, you uh, consider the original, like the default Greninja skin, a toxic skin only because like of the color? But that's beside the point. Um, yeah, yeah. Getting into this game, definitely. Wow. Mm. You got punished on a whiff grab. That's why you know that's why Greninja's grab is kind of suspect. You know, all those frames of lag at the end of that um whiff grab and led to a spot that's not smashed by a Prana Plant. Prana Plant is a uh, strong character. Definitely, I'm um, seeing. Um, I, I can't remember. I think it's Somei, the best Greninja in Japan. Um, I definitely like to see. I definitely like their aggression in terms of like um, gameplay wise, being you know the best Greninja. But um, definitely, I think it's how they kind of pick and choose. You know what interactions they have, which is a lot of what I see from a lot of um, Greninjas a lot now. They begin a lot better, just kind of taking that same kind of approach to this game, picking and choosing. Um, how you want to approach certain situations. Greninja is definitely a very fast character. So being able to just um, apply certain situations, I think the most they use is definitely um, jab um, to kind of follow up off of um, tech situations, but very nice, very, very nice read on that um, air dodge right there. Yeah, and the reason, you know, the reason uh, Blazing Boy air dodge is because in those situations, you're kind of putting a crazy 50 with Greninja, right? You could either get hit by a raw back air by Greninja, or hit by a force mess. But in that situation, you probably want to take the back air, right? You wouldn't die from that. You wouldn't die for that. So I think in that situation, Blazing Boy probably could have taken the hit, you know, Prime Plot being a heavy character. So nice. that, but, you know, yeah. I'm sorry. I think that was also due to um, Fair as an option. Mm -hmm. um, fair is really like it can be really explosive but since it isn't normally true in higher percents that's probably why they went for that but yeah you're, you're right mm -hmm. um for... but also sorry yeah kind of getting to piranha plant this is a character that you don't really see too much i think we've seen a little bit of it um i remember lardo seeing him play wi-fi a little bit um but other than that you don't normally see this character too much but is a character that I unfortunately have the um, a, a not so pleasurable pleasure of understanding um, just because, you know, it's very kind of weird how you approach this character, especially considering um, that this character has a lot of safe options, if I remember correctly, if um, they choose to use their um, spike ball patui, um, they're I think even plus on shields, if I remember correctly. So um, it has a lot of shield sun, just a lot of, you know, recipes for a disaster, but I'm um, gonna take that whoa. kill there, yeah, for sure. Um, F tilt, can, just... can we talk about that runaway DI though? Because under, under normal circumstances, that would not have killed, um, that would not have killed Piranha Plant, right? Like on a midway character, sure, but Piranha Plant, the only reason he lost, they they lost their stock is because they're running away. I think definitely a lot of people get caught in that a lot, just because like, you know, landing as it is already is hard, um, but kind of just like trying to position yourself better when it comes to landing is definitely still hard. So definitely understandable why they would do that. Yeah. But yes, definitely nice. Um, spot dodge right there it's definitely very hard to kind of um punish um normal get up spot dodge just because of like even it doesn't even matter like um which way you do it so if you roll away trying to grab in a lot of those situations are definitely really hard so just reading those better with like probably a dash attack is probably the best option there yeah something that has a lingering uh hitbox right and not because in that situation a grab can be such a committal option, and especially as a Greninja with a bad grab, uh, you could whiff and then lose the stock. So yeah, I feel like probably throwing out something like a dash attack, less committal, less committal, 
um, more meaty, and you could probably get more follow-ups and better follow-ups off a dash check anyway at that, per at that percent. At, excuse me, at those percent. So. I was kind of hoping to see some ledge um, play with the up B there, but we're going to go ahead and go to FD. So since I'm assuming this is um, Jake Runt's counter pick, I'm not entirely sure why they went to this stage. Um, FD is a very good stage for Greninja from my knowledge. In terms of people who have a very hard time landing, if that makes sense, or not necessarily a hard time landing, but just landing in general. Um, walking a lot on the stage definitely kind of like puts a lot of fear into your opponent. But yeah, like they, from what I know, they mostly choose to use this in terms of like just looking to see how people are going to land when they do jump in the air and whatnot. But yeah. Yeah, this no, yeah, no, this is a stage that people use to um, shark their opponent, and um, yeah, that, that was an untackable, by the way. Yeah, um, but um, yeah, people do, do use a stage, it might be a comfortability thing, because like right now, um, Blazing Boy is in the lead. So, you know, it could be a comfort pick, um, even though on paper it's probably better for Greninja. At the end of the day, if you have a comfort pick ready, then, you know, it's whatever makes you comfortable, and it looks like they're definitely thriving on the stage. Absolutely. Um, so they definitely are getting some really nice extra credit. Um, definitely looking to see how Jake Kern will take this stock because they definitely tried to um, edge guard them a few times, but not really availing to anything or amounting to anything too awesome. Um, but yes, definitely going to take that stock at 167 or 176. But yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, pretty good whiff punish. I'm with Porter. And you know, I'm, I'm really liking, um, cause you were talking about this earlier, and I'm liking Piranha Blazing Boy's use of the Patui, right? It's it's actually keeping Jager pretty honest when it comes to landing on top of Piranha Plant. And you know, earlier on in the game, you saw Jager try to land on top of Piranha Plant, and every single time that he does it, he's getting hit with the Patui, and um, you know, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty tough to get on him right now. Ooh, that was very, <laughs> very, uh... Not bad, but that was OD. Yeah. <laughs> that was OD. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah. They're definitely gonna have to make that back. Or yeah. definitely like that's calling coming in there. But oh. one of the things I did see um, Blazing Boy do was actually um, kind of run in with Batui, um, noticing that um, Jay Grunt was trying to kind of stall their landing and whatnot. Which is very interesting, but definitely making this game a lot more even. Um, Jake Run, very nice coming from them. Yeah, Jake Run is his back a little bit, and um, I feel like Jake Run taking that stock with the forward air before definitely helped him a lot. But I feel like they were lagging a lot behind in percent, but that's why we play a good character with confirms, right? Um, that's. You don't have to look up to it. Very nice spacing coming in right there. Amazing. Um, but definitely something that I've also noticed. Um, oh, oh. That could have that could have been so amazing right there. But alas, no. Um, so yeah, definitely. Um, when it comes to like a lot of Greninja's like um, tech chasing situations. Oh. Ooh. So. And this is this has been a story of of Blazing Boy telling Jay Grunt, stop trying to land on me. Because every every single time that Jay Grunt hasn't put at the ledge, you see uh Blazing Boy throw out the mist, they'll throw out the mist, then a patui, and then an anti-air option, right? Either, either, whether it be a up tilt or an up smash. Right? Mm -hmm. This is the first time at the ledge that he's throwing out up smash, and man, he's telling him, yo, stop jumping on me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely like that um, kind of situation off stage. I feel like it did go right through that specifically because that um, has armor on it. So it's probably why that happened. But um, yeah, definitely needs to do a little bit more research on how they approach edge guarding plant. Just because that's kind of where they messed up a lot of times. Um, maybe could have misplaced or um, replaced the situation with, um, I think, 
uh, the counter, that could have been an option. But anyways, getting into the next game, 1-1 one, one a piece. Yeah, but, but speaking of the counter, like one good, good thing that Jager was doing was doing the counter within the poison gas. Because the poison gas automatically activates the counter, right? So sometimes when Blazing Boy was trying to do a mix-up in the mist, he just said, okay, well, I'm just going to counter and just not deal with the mix-up at all. So that was one good thing he was doing against it, but but then he kept trying to like immediately counterattack, and that's where he was getting hit by Blazing Boy. Definitely interesting to see what's probably gonna change up this game. I definitely haven't seen, um, you know, um, Jake Run really put too much um, pressure on these tech, ch tech chase situations. You know, I think that's definitely something that um, Greninja can definitely be better at. But yeah, yeah, and yeah, you know, and I feel like usually out of the Greninja players, you see one tech chase tech chase situation where you see him get a jab block or something crazy like that. Or even like a falling, a drag down up air, right? And I feel like we haven't seen any of those really yet. I think we maybe saw one, and then he messed it up and pushed him off stage. But um, yeah, so far we haven't really seen a lot of that. And it's been mostly, it's been mostly down tilt the forward airs and like, you know, just stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I think mostly, um, I think it's after up throw. I'm not entirely sure how they start it. I might be wrong here, but they definitely there's a lot of chances for them to kind of start that kind of situation with tech chasing and whatnot there. But I'm definitely gonna take that kill on um, Blazing Boy um, with up tilt, very nice. Um, which I also don't think people know that up there was actually a kill throw, which is kind of like oh, for oh, not, but, yeah, for Piranha Plant, up there was actually a um, kill throw, but he. It's very, very. It's actually a very strong throw. <laughs> Funny enough, like it's like if if when it is at like 120, they're dying to up throw 100%. But. I definitely do like how Blazing Boy is definitely trying to apply a lot more pressure at ledge, but it definitely seems like they're trying to read a little bit too hard, if that makes sense. Just because like they're kind of going for things and not really like kind of reacting to it and whatnot. Which is definitely hard to react to stuff on Wi-Fi, of course, but yeah, definitely like a little bit more patience at the ledge there, I would hope for. Yeah, speaking of patience at the ledge, Jaeger is throwing out a lot of shurikens at the ledge. And I think, um, and I think they, uh, backed off a little bit because of, um, I don't know, I don't know why they backed off a little bit at the ledge. That's, I'm actually kind of confused about that, like why they start backing up throwing out, um, sh uh, shurikens. Um, I feel like it's mostly because of um, Kitsui and whatnot, because, um, you know, this character, Plant, can, like, really threaten a lot of space with Kitsui alone. Um, just because it's like, if, if you're playing this character like, the first time, you're like, how do I deal with this one move that is definitely going to be a huge part of this character's kit? Like, they'll use it for ledge trapping, edge guarding, just everything, you know what I mean? Um, so definitely trying to be a little bit more aware about that space, that um, Blazing Boy's kind of threatening with Batuu and whatnot. Yeah, it's funny, it's like DDD Gordo. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I think Order. The only thing that kind of like, um, kind of Greninja, I feel like, would have more of an option in this matchup is definitely closing a lot of space within the two because, um, since Greninja is a shorter character, if he kind of like runs up, very nice right there, but not gonna take the kill immediately. Um, but definitely if Greninja, um, kind of like runs up, kind of threatens a little bit more ground area, that kind of like removes um Kitsui as a kind of tool altogether is that gonna kill absolutely yeah, yeah. and yeah yeah once again um yeah and once again um Jager using the counter in the mist and i'm actually pretty surprised that blazing boy kind of just like went for that outright um because Jay Grunt wasn't at the edge of the stage yeah i'm very very surprised they just did that like that considering that Jay Grunt countered almost every single time that he did the poisonous <laughs> poison gas, so that was. 
I mean, there's really nothing wrong with that. I don't think too much, but just like kind of using it more in a different way to kind of gain control of stage. I mean, gain stage control, I would hope more instead of just doing it the way that I that they did it most of the time, because they kind of did it in a situation where they would either have to land or get back to stage in order to kind of like go back to playing neutral, if that makes sense. Yeah, like definitely hoping to see if they would kind of consider that a little bit more just to get back to stage but yeah um so looking at the bracket here we actually have an upset uh -oh. I'm, I'm not sure um uh -oh. how fine spoon is seated but they um actually beat Tejus 2-1 with uh -oh. plant too so this was um a little thing here very um interesting I definitely know Bayo players struggle a lot with that matchup. Wait, um, Piranha Plant is Yeah, it's definitely a really hard matchup if Bayo players don't know it because you have this big bowl that just actually destroys her whole neutral. She can't dash attack, she can't heal slide. She